In terms of what scientists can do, I've been seeing a lot of really great engagement of scientists on Twitter, where they're reaching out to, again, those normal, average, everyday people in language that they can access and understand, because scientific papers, let's be honest, are not really accessible to your normal person. Um, and explaining it in, in language that, you know, Aunt Sally or Uncle Joe could comprehend. Um, and doing that from a place of humility and empathy, because again, this is a time of high emotions, of a lot of fear, uh, and people have real questions and misgivings about the way things are being handled all around the world. Um, and I think scientists and doctors have a unique uh, position from which they can talk to normal people. And we have to, again, do that from humility, a place of humility um, and compassion. I, I'll actually compare it to journalism in this regard, investigative journalism. And I think um, science and, and investigative journalism have a lot in common in that to normal people, they're kind of a black box. And what we've seen in the age of disinformation and journalism is the peeling back of that cover of the box to the normal people to kind of explain to people how investigations go about. And I think for a lot of people who didn't do science for a degree, um, they might be confused about how the scientific process and scientific inquiry works. And the more that we can open that up and explain it to them, again, transparently and in accessible terms, I think um, the more people will kind of understand that actually, uh, you know, <laughs> this isn't some sort of geopolitical cabal deep state conspiracy uh, to implant microchips in people, that actually these pandemics have a history, uh, that there are people who are working to solve them, and you know, uh, that this is the way that the process works. And I think there's been a lot of, interestingly enough, uh, scientific journalism about that stuff happening during the coronavirus pandemic. So I think uh, certainly TV is a great way to conduct that outreach. Um, unfortunately, because of the polarization of our political environment and our media environment right now and you know the way the advertising system works often you can't get into a fulsome discussion um, on certain networks and you know you're you're forced into little sound bites and that's of course a problem however um, there are a lot of outlets that are doing really great journalism right now certainly podcasts are uh, increasingly popular although I have heard that podcast listenership is down I guess because people aren't commuting <laughs> right now uh, but podcasts and videos I think are great way um, to communicate directly to people. And actually, we've seen a lot of dis and misinformation proliferating on uh, platforms like YouTube because anybody can post. But if we're you know, trying to inject some trustworthy, credible information into that environment, I think that can only be a good thing, of course. Um, and then other than that, you know, I would say uh, looking beyond national media and, and looking to our local radio stations, our local newspapers, to the extent that they still exist. Of course, they're really hurting during this crisis. But local news is going to be increasingly valuable um, as states consider whether or not to reopen uh, their public spaces and things like that. I think that's where scientists can really make a difference in explaining what they're seeing in their communities, what their work is about, and knowing that someone, an expert like that, uh, in your community is you know, thinking about those important topics, I think will give people a degree of calm in this situation. So local media to me are one of the key you know, linkages uh, between people and the things that are going on in the larger, not only information ecosystem, but in the country writ large. And uh, again, we're seeing an unfortunate decline in them, but one way we can invest is by you know, directing our expertise there at this time.